Okay, so right here we have my IBM ThinkPad, or Lenovo ThinkPad, for those of you that want to be more fancy. T61. And, um, I'm going to run the Windows Experience Index. After it complains because it needs confirmation. But the reason why I'm running this is because I have just upgraded the memory. Here is the old stick. This is a 1 gigabyte PC250-300 module. I have just stuffed in 2 gigabytes of a PC260-400. I thought it wasn't going to work, but guess what? It works. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> so if you saw in my last my review video, it can only take 5300. That is incorrect because I have just proven that it can so take 5600. Nevertheless, but just so you guys don't feel left out, I have got some footage that I am going to show you of this. So without further ado, let's bring on the footage. Alright, so today we are going to take this machine and we are going to upgrade the memory from the one gigabyte that it has in it to uh, the two gigabytes that I have sitting right here. These are actually from um, the old um, satellite that I used to have, not from the Satellite Pro that you saw in the last video. That actually went to a different machine. But uh, <clears throat> So, what you want to do first is you want to unplug everything. And by the way, I've actually got step-by-step -step instructions right here because this is my first time doing this. I want to make sure I don't screw something up. I will give you a link to, this, to these instructions if you ask for it because I can't put links in the description of the video, apparently. And I can't put links in annotations, which is a sad limitation of YouTube. So what you want to do first is you want to turn off the computer, which has been done. You want to unplug it, and you want to take everything that you've plugged in out of it. External hard drives, printers, VGA cables, the Ethernet cable if you've got one, PCI cards, everything. PCI cards. PCI... PC cards. It takes me so long to say that. And, um... Then you want to close the computer, like so, pretty simple, and flip it over, being careful not to break anything, because I've just replaced the hard drive in this, I don't want to do anything stupid and break the new hard drive that I put in. Then what you want to do is you want to remove the battery. This switch right here, unlock it, and simply remove it like that. Now, okay. So now we're going to have to remove the palm rest, and uh, to do that, you will take the screws that are marked, as you can see right there on the paper, with that marking, or something similar. My printer's actually bunched up a little bit, so it might not be so visible. On the instructions, you'll be able to tell what I'm looking at, and uh, hopefully you cannot read those installer discs, these installer codes. Um, if you can, I'll blank them out. But uh, anyways... So, um, <clears throat> you remove the four screws with, um, it can be either a flat head or you can use a Phillips head. I'm going to use a flat head because that's something you want to have that will work. Then I'll strip the screw out. And then I'm going to switch over to my Phillips head and see. That works. That one's out. And you have to be very careful not to strip these because you want to actually be able to put it back together. Unless, of course, you're destroying your machine and you don't want to. But I want to keep this thing as perfect condition as possible. And it doesn't want to do that for me. Just a second. Okay, if you want to be like that, I want to change screwdrivers, which is what I have just done. Oh, please. They have this in here pretty tight. And then I find out that, like, maybe a few minutes later, that this wasn't one of the screws I was supposed to remove. Uh, 
and I can get really pissed with my uh myself. There are four screws and there's the other one. Doesn't tell me anything about having to remove a hard drive. So I don't think I have to remove the hard drive cover. And so there's the last one. Oh please. And I got them all. Okay, so then after you've removed all the screws, which I have done safely, I've got them arranged in the way that I took them out, so I don't mistake any screws. So then you flip it over, open it up, you can remove the palm rest simply by lifting up carefully, not too hard. I have nails, so this is easier for me. But you get them both the same way. Okay, then you will see here that there is a ribbon cable attached there. I don't need to touch that, but it will be a good idea to unplug it just in case. This is definitely not the safest thing to do. And uh, there are your memory slots. So I'm going to take this out. This is a 1 gigabyte PC2 5300 module. That is uh, very dusty. Get it in the shot. I'm going to install these two new modules. Hopefully I don't break the computer doing this. So, um, let's install the bottom one first. Like me, please. Wrong module. This is the one I want. It's best not to mix memory types. If you're going to have a 6400 in there, have both of them at a 6400. And reinstall the palm rest very, very carefully. Now I'm not going to screw the palm rest back in place or the hard drive cover back in place just yet, but you should do that. That would be a good idea. I'm going to um, take this and see if Windows still boots. Or I'm going to see if the machine still actually works. If I put the battery back in. Lock the battery in place. Flip the machine over. I'm just going to use it off battery being very careful here with this machine. Hopefully I didn't break anything in the process of doing this. I'm going to um, interrupt normal startup here. It's doing something. We are going to hit F1 to go into BIOS. And you can see that we have, you might not be able to see it, but we have two gigabytes of installed memory. So let's reboot the computer. See what happens to Windows. It's probably going to ask me to reactivate because you know that's the Windows thing to do. Everything appears to be working. I do have my wireless. Come 
on, tell me something good. Tell me something good. Oh, there it goes. Screen is a little dark. Now here's the moment of truth. Does my fingerprint sensor still work? This is a little loose. I'll fix that later. I don't know what it is, but I think the fingerprint sensor doesn't like me. Oh, there it goes. I was thinking that it wasn't working. It's like, oh crap, we got a problem. But anyways, uh, let's see if Windows identifies the full gigabyte. Full gigabyte, full two gigabytes. Definitely seems to be going quicker than it was. Go into computer and we will go into properties. And then I find out that the welcome center starts up. Oh, please. It's still not the quickest thing in the world, but it's definitely better. Now, of course, in doing that, I had to shut the computer off, so. I think I had it running for about. 240 some odd hours in a row. It is identifying the full gigabyte, two gigabytes. And of course, we're going to have to rate the system again. There we go. So that is how you upgrade memory in an IBM ThinkPad T61. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I hope to see you next time. Till then. And oh yeah, one more thing. Please no derogatory comments about the status and messiness of my desk. This is actually the cleanest it's been in a while, so... And I just found out something. You cannot run the uh, Windows Experience Index rating when the system is on battery power, so you have to plug it in. Just in case you get a message saying it won't run, that's what's wrong. It will actually tell you that that's what's wrong, so I didn't really need to tell you that. Okay, so now you've seen all that beautiful footage. And yes, I did screw the, the, uh, the palm rest back in. But now uh, we're almost finished, and we are actually finished, the rating. It is now... A 3.5. Nice. You can see the system information remains the same, pretty much. That hasn't changed yet. It should. So, uh, till next time. And uh, until then.